Hi Krishna. So it's hard to be hard to believe that it's one day later and we're in New York. It is probably about 60 degrees instead of uh, 80. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yes, it is horrible. And you can't see anything in the distance here. <coughs> Excuse me, because uh, yeah, it's so foggy, overcast. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we're here. We're in the East River Park. Lower East Side. Lower East Side, yes. And uh, we're reading Bhagavatam. And, All right. Uh, today, of course, by the time you see this, it'll be quite a few days later. But I'm leaving for the UK today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Normally, you know, celebs and that, they don't say what their location is. Yeah, so it's much later. But it's a good job we're not a celeb. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Excuse me. Yeah, we got hay fever as well. So we're on 24. 24. Okay. Yeah. All right. Canto for chapter 16, text 24. All right. We're almost done. Yeah, yeah, we're finished today. Yeah. All right. Om Om Twenty-four. At the source of the river Saraswati, this king will perform one hundred sacrifices known as Ashwamedha. <coughs> In the course of the last sacrifice, the heavenly king Indra will steal the sacrificial horse. <laughs> Text 25. This king Prithu will meet Sanat Kumara, one of the four Kumaras in the garden of his palace compound. The king will worship him with devotion and will be fortunate to receive instructions by which one can enjoy transcendental bliss. Mm. Oh, oh. The word Vedanti refers to one who knows something or enjoys something. When a person is properly instructed by a spiritual master and understands transcendental bliss, he enjoys life. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 18.4054, Brahma Bhuta Prasan Atma Na Sochati Na Kansati. When one attains to the Brahman platform, he neither hankers nor laments. He actually partakes of transcendental blissful enjoyment. Although King Prithu was an incarnation of Vishnu, he nonetheless taught the people in his kingdom to take instructions from a spiritual master who represents the disciplic succession. Thus, one can become fortunate and enjoy a blissful life even within this material world. In this verse, the verb vidanti is sometimes taken to mean understanding. Thus, when a person understands Brahman, or the supreme source of everything, he enjoys a blissful life. Mm. Interesting. It's reminding me of um, that last bit where you if you understand brahman or the source of everything krishna you enjoy a blissful life it reminds me of the discussion we were having yesterday with devotees and as as happens in the material world ups and downs someone devotee is just experiencing some down situation and, you know we're just saying that well my realization also having gone through downs believe it or not <laughs> is we just need to plug into internally you know we need to plug into Krishna consciousness easier said than done but that was my realization because things are always shifting and changing you know death can come upon us at any moment we take things for granted mm. death meaning not just our own but I mean those around <coughs> us people you know positions come and go service work whatever so I was just sharing like that but yeah, we somehow 
we need to t make the onus to make to heal ourselves as it were which is anyway i just felt that was by going deeper because we're going to go deeper into something you know when we're hurt as devotees or otherwise we're going to take shelter of something so we're either going to retreat away from the process and take shelter of that what we used to or go forward in the process so, because one we've got to do something so that just reminded me of that someone who knows the source of everything he enjoys a blissful life mm. yeah it's interesting that you bring that up and of course this verse I was just thinking that of course one may even know who Krishna is in the sense we know Krishna exists we know about his holy name we know the Yuga Dharma we know philosophy we know and still there's hankering and distress and so it's not as immediate as just like oh if you know Krishna you become blissful I mean in general yes you do become blissful and I know we've heard you know many lectures and discussions on this point you know because what is it that um, that kind of causes someone to still have those issues sometimes people say offenses that because when we first come to Krishna consciousness it is super amazingly blissful and also later it can it can be and is blissful it's just uh, yeah we can still experience this these downs as you say, you know uh, yeah but is it that we experience don't we experience the downs more as an observer and not a partaker when we advance so when we're not so... Well, when we advance, okay, but what we're talking about being quite advanced because you just mentioned someone who's like in a certain space. And I mean, it depends how much do we get into when something apparently negative happens. Our philosophy says that, you know, there is no bad in Krishna's world. Everything's good. Everything's for his, for his, uh, you know, ultimately he's, he's enjoying... And if something negative happens, it's just simply a, a minor token of our, our karma. But we still get caught up in it. It's not like we sit in some abstract... You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm, yeah, I beg to differ. Well, I don't, well, please explain, because otherwise we leave <laughs> everyone who's joining us a little bit bewildered. No, we're not trying to bewilder you. Okay. We don't want to put you on a downer either. But I guess what my understanding is that to the degree <coughs> that you're absorbed, like I, you know, the risk of sounding like a Sahaja or someone, or a show bottle spiritualist, as perhaps I can say. Yeah, definitely moments <coughs> in my life where, where you're really <coughs> tuned in, coming to the temple, service, even away from the temple mini at work or hey, whatever your son is on peak form whatever you don't things don't bother you and then on other times yeah you could do some damage <laughs> so I guess what I'm saying is that so the, the distinguishing factor sounds like what you're saying is the distinguishing factor is if I'm on peak form I'm all right. If I'm not on peak form, then I could, you know, do some damage. Sort of, yeah. I'm not negating feelings and emotions. I For example, if someone tell me like one of my parents passed away, I won't be like, anyway, I'm on peak form, so life and death and all that is part of, you know, I'd be very upset, obviously. So, I don't mean it in that way, but I was talking more of more on the level of something someone says something or this one did that or and it doesn't sit in my mind for you know they say someone lives in your mind for rent free as it were <laughs> yeah we carry them around free so it's easy to just oh so they are well that's what are they krishna are krishna not quite sure yeah not for sure. Not all people are in that space, and you know. You why don't people comment and let us know? Yeah, why don't you comment? <laughs> Maybe you can comment and say, well, "Why don't you guys just shut up and read the Bhagavad Gita?" Well, why don't you? All right, twenty-six. 
In this way, when the chivalrous activities of King Prithu come to be known to the people in general, King Prithu will always hear about himself and his uniquely powerful activities. Purport To artificially advertise oneself and thus enjoy a so-called reputation is a kind of conceit. Prithu Maharaj was famous amongst the people because of his chivalrous activities. He did not have to advertise himself artificially. One's factual reputation cannot be covered. Yeah, so... Um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Lord, mercy. Um, yeah, it sounds like Prabhupada is really picking up on this point because in the verse it explains that he's going to be so well known and so famous that everyone will be singing his glories all the time. But in the modern day, people like to uh, prom do self-promotion or promote themselves so much that they get to hear about themselves all the time. But Prabhupada says that's a sort of conceit. And then he says that, you know, one's factual reputation cannot be covered. It means if one is actually a, a, a person of substance, they'll naturally become well-known and become famous. It's not that they have to necessarily do self-promotion, but just because everyone will appreciate, appreciate them something like that. All right, text 27. <clears throat> No one will be able to disobey the orders of Prithu Maharaj. After conquering the world, he will completely eradicate the free felt miseries of the citizens. Then he will be recognized all over the world. At that time, both the Suras and the Asuras will undoubtedly glorify his magnanimous activities. Yeah. Purple. At the time of Maharaj Prithu, the world was ruled by one emperor, although there were many subordinate states. Just as there are many united states in various parts of the world, in olden days, the entire world was ruled through many states. But there was a supreme emperor who ruled over all subsidiary states. As soon as there were some discrepancies in the maintenance of the Vanashram system, the emperor would immediately take charge of the small states. Mm. Yeah, it's like what we were saying yesterday that it's quite a it's quite a powerful post to be one emperor over the whole world and for that you can see the caliber of the leaders that you have to be because even if you like in charge of the stationary cupboard at work you can be quite like oh, oh. <coughs> you're not having that pen you took that staple, you took a stapler last month, what are you doing? You know, it can, anyway, so, <laughs> let alone being the ruler of the whole world. So, <laughs> we can see these verses of glorifying um, Prithu Maharaj and character, and then you can see, yeah, because look at the post he's going to be holding, you know, mm. it takes us and a ray of Krishna as it were as he is or as it were to, to do that to not mm. get carried away and we see different even on spiritual paths or whatever it takes a lot of purity and um, groundedness to remain guru or leader as such yeah I'm just you know really just as soon as you get some position or title it yeah, it's like the modes and the lower natures just rise and it's Step like over. It's quite scary actually, so yeah. Yeah, I like that being in charge of a stationary cupboard you still get fanatical and <laughs> radical and <laughs> Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Next paragraph and this will finish the chapter. The word Utpatita Loka Shalya indicates that Prithu Maharaj completely uprooted all the miseries of his citizens. The word Shalya means piercing thorns. There are many kinds of miserable thorns that pierce the citizens of a state, but all competent rulers, even up to the reign of Maharaj Yudhisthira, uprooted all the miserable conditions of the citizens. It is stated that during the reign of Maharaj Yudhisthira, there did not even exist severe cold or scorching heat, nor did the citizens suffer from any kind of mental anxiety. 
This is the standard good government. Sorry, this is the standard of good government. Such peaceful and prosperous government, devoid of anxiety, was established by Prithu Maharaj. Thus the inhabitants of both saintly and demoniac planets were all engaged in glorifying the activities of Maharaj Prithu. Persons or nations anxious to spread their influence all over the world should consider this point. Probably giving direct instruction to the, <laughs> to the entire world, basically. If one is able to eradicate completely the threefold miseries of the citizens, he should aspire to rule the world. One should not aspire to rule for any political or diplomatic consideration. That's very powerful. Thus end the Bhagavad purports of the fourth canto, sixteenth chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled Praise of King Prithu by the Professional Reciters. So this is very powerful. Prabhupada encouraging that um, uh, what what consciousness a real leader is in, a ruler should be in, and that if one is uh, able to help to free others from misery uh, specifically the threefold miseries then one one should uh, become the ruler of the whole planet basically <laughs> um, and one should not aspire to rule for any political or diplomatic consideration so it's not like oh I've just become you know the ruler so that I can get back at my friend or get back at my mate or do good for my people or you know it's like mm. it's like we want to help everybody that's that's a proper ruler someone who's equipoised I guess so yeah so that concludes the uh, chapter 16 16th so, chapter so next we'll be starting with chapter 17 yes and uh, I wanted to show you this picture. It's on the front of the fourth canto, and it's Prithu Maharaj and his wife Archie as they're coming out of King Vena's body. I'm going to put it closer. Go on, then. We discussed it once before, I remember, because I, I mentioned that I'd looked at that cover so many times and never knew exactly what it was and oh I didn't notice goodness. they were coming out of the body yes. and it's uh, Archie and Pritchett. Yeah, it's very powerful. <laughs> and this is uh, um, Dhruva Maharaj fighting the Yakshas. Very powerful. Yeah, Prabhupada is just so amazing. Not only did he translate, but he engaged so many devotees in doing such awesome and wonderful artwork. Mm. To just give us windows into the spiritual world, into the bottom of mm. So, we're so fortunate. Jai, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Yeah.